I'm Nick Hudson, chairman of an organization called Pandata.org, affectionately known as Panda. Um, it was set up to push back against the travesties of the lockdowns in early 2020 and the general hysteria of the COVID phenomenon. Thank you to the MPs for organizing this. It's a pleasure to be back here. The inane banner, nobody is safe until everyone is safe, is doing much harm. Your money is being stolen for the benefit of corrupt companies and their stakeholders, and your freedom and the freedom of your children is being stolen by the effort to centralize this corruption at a global level. I come from Africa, and it suffers the most extreme example of how this fraud, fraud is being perpetrated. Africa, Africa has many problems, with a median life expectancy just above 60. Clearly, some of these problems relate to health. But the unrelenting obsession with viral diseases represents a scandalous misallocation of resources. Africa doesn't have lower life expectancy because of viruses. It has lower life expectancy because of poverty and malnutrition. Healthcare workers in Africa are so thinly spread that the average one is responsible for the care of thousands of people. Yet under the COVAX initiative, the African CDC has estimated that tens of billions of dollars needed to be spent vaccinating Africans against COVID. As my colleague Dr. David Bell points out, that wall of money ought to be viewed in the context of the World Health Organization's entire annual budget of $3 billion and the Global Fund's aggregate annual global expenditure on malaria, tuberculosis and HIV of about $4 billion. The wild lunacy of that ambition is even more vivid when we consider that most Africans have long been immune to COVID owing to prior exposure and that only a tiny minority of them were at risk in the first place owing to the very small portion of people in the older age groups in Africa. Trying to pass this madness off as some kind of equity simply won't cut it. And it is a very clear reflection of the sinister turn towards one-size-fits-all policies that the COVID policy response has exemplified and which constructs such as One Health, global coordination in the name of pandemic preparedness, the WHO treaty, and most importantly, the international health regulation am amendments are being weaponized. Before this peak vaccine psychophancy, we had the lockdowns. They were ineffective. They were contradicted by all preceding guidelines, and they were implemented without any sign of a cost-benefit analysis. Even if they worked in developed nations, and most surely they did not. In Africa, they were completely impractical. Attempts to implement them caused immense economic damage. Millions of people were holed into grinding poverty. Entire cohorts of children had their educational prospects destroyed with absolutely no hope of recovery. The adage that lockdowns were a matter of lives versus the economy was always a completely silly one. Economies, mandate, uh, economies mediate life. Yet even as the WHO seeks to enlarge massively its powers and control in purported pandemic situations, it shows no sign whatsoever of acknowledging that the globally centralized responses of lockdowns and, vaccine, uh, and vaccination programs not only failed, but represented staggering misappropriation of resources. And make no mistake, it is your money that is being misappropriated, whether by direct taxes or the indirect ones from the implementation of so-called modern monetary theory, you are paying. Instead, the WHO shows every sign of wanting to do more of these programs. This is very clearly demonstrated by its obsession 
with vaccine passports and the central role that vaccines play in the One Health initiative. None of this is very far adrift from the commercial and political objectives of the so-called stakeholders who have infiltrated the WHO at every level in a coordinated effort of many years. We do well to take a step back from the narrow confine of pandemics to survey the broader context of our times. Pandemic preparedness is far from being the only agenda that drives towards centralization. I have a little rule of thumb for diagnosing a centralization scam. If we, can, if we can detect, one, a propagandized global crisis, two, admitting only global solutions, and three, with dissenting voices viciously silenced, then we know with absolute certainty that we are dealing with a scam. And anyone who has been watching events of recent years with even a modicum of attention will be aware that multiple agendas tick these three boxes right now, not just the COVID agenda. The architects of such globalist trajectories, all the Kissingers, Rockefellers, Schwabs, Carnies, Strongs, Carstens, Bangas, are held out as great intellects, but they are nothing of the sort. We know both in theory and in practice that centralization causes nothing but misery because it destroys the mechanisms of error correction, leading to doubling down on flawed policies. And it cannot do otherwise, especially not in the highly centralized institutions that have been captured by these hubristic people. History is replete with examples of tyrants enamored of their centralizing visions, believe, believing each time that they hold some perspective or some asset that their predecessors lacked. Today, it is the false belief that access to more data and bigger computers will mean that this time is different. But it isn't different. People still make mistakes, and when those who amass great power and control do so, the results are disastrous. Africans have found out the hard way how much centralized mistakes hurt, and they will mount a fight against this reiteration of colonialism. But citizens of all nations need to commit to fighting this tendency towards centralization at all levels and in all places. The entirety of our well-beings and freedoms is at stake. Thank you.